Hey everyone, Ted Simpson here, certified Ross instructor, and I thought I would start a new series of short videos that I'm calling Nature's Brush Basics. And of course, the best thing and the first thing we should do is the most iconic thing about Bob, which is the happy little evergreen trees. So, I've got a canvas here. This has already been uh, went over with a little bit of, this is just liquid white. I did a quick little sky and a quick little set of clouds when I was doing some practice. So this canvas is dry. I'm going back over this dry canvas with just a thin amount of the liquid clear. Okay? That just keeps the canvas wet and slick and allows us to do this wet on wet technique. So, what do we got here today for this quick little class? We've got our mountain mixture, which is just a very, very dark blue-black type color, some sap green, and a little bit of cadmium yellow for highlights. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this sap green, and I'm gonna mix it in. One of the most important things that we do in this process, this technique, Put the shadows in first. We just make a basic shape and then we define all the branches when we do the highlights. So I got a big pile of the mountain mix and just a little bit of sap green. And let's talk about loading the brush. Which brush should you use? Well, you can make small trees with the with the little script line, I'm sorry, <laughs> with the uh, number three fan brush, or you can make them big with using the large fan brush. So I'm just gonna start out making these a little bit smaller here, just so you can see these trees form out here. So, I'm taking some paint, and I load some in here. Plenty of color from the pile, and then I just gently smooth it to create a wedge-like amount of color. Bob will sometimes call this a chiseled edge. There's a lot of paint here. What I like to tell my students is have the paint about halfway up the brush, and where the bristles are, you can't really see. Let me say that again. Where the paint is, you can't really see the bristles. So, depending on what handed you are, you want to hold that brush level, bring it over to the side, either right for righties or left for lefties, and then drop the handle. The goal here is to tap the brush. So I'm going to put a skinny little line here. And then you hold that brush over and down, and you just tap to deposit the paint. The goal is to bend the bristles. Tap, and you get those those little tiny branches started. Once I start going down, building out the body of the tree, I tap in the center and then work my way out. I'm using both sides of the tree made with the corner. I'm using the same corner for both sides. I tap and go out. I let those bristles bend. That's what makes the paint come off. If you find your brush losing paint, just stop and reload. And you start to get into a little rhythm here of tapping. Tap a little harder, a little more paint comes off. We just want to make a dark shape. I'm going to show you that again. Hold my brush, brush vertically with the tapping down motion. Makes a skinny little line. Hold that brush over and down. Tap a couple spots right on the line. Now I can start building that tree. Tapping in the center and going out. Tapping a little harder makes the branch a little bigger. But I like to keep that center nice and full, nice and dark, full of color. That's what gives it that full appearance. We can always add trunks later. 
So you don't have to worry about this line being the full trunk. We can put the trunk in later. As you get going on this, try going faster. See that with these small trees, these just drop in very, very quickly. Just looking for a basic shape. Now, I'm going to show you the other way to make trees with the fan brush here. I tap in my little line. We call these downward facing trees, or maybe you want to call them frowny trees. Let's do the opposite. Instead of going over and down, I go over and up. And I'm bending the bristles the opposite direction. These will give us a little smile. Focusing on one half at a time. Tapping upwards, going from the center, then out. Always dropping down, building the tree downwards. And you start to get a smiley appearance there. I'll do a couple more of these. Loading my brush often here, getting a little bit of paint out there. Then I start tapping center out, center out. They, they form very, very quickly. You can make them small or not so small. The great thing is if any anytime you don't like the tree, you can adjust it. And the fix usually is just make the whole tree bigger. That way you can cover up any past issues there, a little, your little happy accidents. The happy accident here is you get to practice more trees. So if you mess one up, use it as a learning opportunity. Okay? Just down here at the bottom, I just like to tap in just a little bit of a little bit of ground, a little bit of grass that these trees are growing out of. Just helps you uh, visualize the scene a little bit. Same thing with the upward facing trees. I'm just going to push a little bit up, and it makes some nice little lawn-like effects there. See that? Pretty simple. It's simple to learn takes a little while to master. So, practice often. Just make some trees. Scrape them off. Make them again. I'm just wiping off the excess paint here. I don't have to go through the whole brush cleaning process. And now I'm going to make my highlight color. I'm going to take a small amount of the liquid white, just a little bit of a dunk. Doink! And what I'm going to do is start teasing some of the yellow away from the pile. And then I mix it in. Grab a little bit of yellow, mix it in. The liquid white will lighten your yellow. So if it looks a little too light, it's probably too much liquid white. Just pull a little bit more yellow down. Once you get a nice shiny look going on here in your little working pile, then I come over, I pick up a, a bit of sap green, a little at a time here, I work it in, back and forth, maybe a little bit more. And at some point here, you may feel that paint getting a little thicker, so I add just a touch more of the liquid white, making sure that the, I load that brush the same way with a thin, tinted color and I am good to go. For the trees, once again, we start up here at the top, bring the handle over and down, so I'm just using that corner to lightly touch. Touch a couple of those spots at the top. That's all they need. Now that I'm gonna start doing the body of the tree, what I like to do is I bring the handle in. So I'm just like almost coming straight in and then lower the handle. I'm gonna use the arc of the fan to make my little frowns. And I tap and I move. Tap, tap, tap. Always dropping down. 
tap, tap, tap. I think of these as sort of like stair steps. Tap, lower and out, lower and out. Doot, doot, doot. Doot, doot, doot. Tap, 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 tap. And that tree is done, okay? The trick is, is to leave plenty of dark. So I start with the brush handle over, getting just a couple little things on those small ones. Then I start tapping, going down. Don't give yourself a lot of time to do this. I, I want you to just work it down, leave it alone. You can highlight these trees in, in mere seconds. Okay, tap, 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 working your way down, sticking the highlight color right on top of the shadow. All right, you can see here, you probably know what's coming up next. So I come up to my smiley trees, I go over and up, and just tap, 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 pushing the branches upward facing. Tap, 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 letting some of the dark remain so that the highlights stand out. I am like Bob. I, I like to do these fast and just move on with the day. <laughs> Bob calls it being a lazy painter. I just call it just get through it before you mess it up. There you go. See that? But if we keep going over and over and over it, pretty soon we'll have the whole tree covered with highlights and we won't see any shadow. Using my downward facing taps here, I can put in a little indication of, of grass just by tap, tap, tap and moving around here. Same thing with the upward facing. Now you can do downward facing grass or upward facing grass. It doesn't matter on whatever trees you do. I'm just putting a little indication of some highlight there on the underbrush. And there it is. Two different ways to create evergreens with the fan brush. That is it, folks. Super simple, 10 minutes or so. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what else you want to see in a quick video. A couple of simple steps here. I can go a little bit more in depth than when I'm doing a full painting. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.